Hello, Guilty Gear fans! Welcome to me playing more ranked play, because why not? I actually was playing around a bit earlier. People are online. It seems to work. As far as I can tell, the issue I was having last time is that Guilty Gear has a very unique way of doing things. Or I'm not sure if it's unique, but it's very much unlike Skullgirls. Skullgirls, you go into rank play, you go for a rank match, or quick match rather, and it just, whenever it finds someone, you automatically start a game. In Guilty Gear, on the other hand, you have to pick somebody out of that list that you just saw there. But if they've already picked someone else and are already playing with them, it's going to come on as fail to connect because they're currently playing somebody else, which is a really confusing problem. Ah. Man, this is annoying. Okay. What I wanted to do was that. Okay, so this... I don't think I've actually played a Potemkin yet. As you can tell, rather... Ah, there are Potemkins slow, clumsy, and really, really packs a punch. I haven't done Potemkin Buster yet, so I... Ow. Alright, let's see if I can deal with this. I'm trying to do that to you. They're not being safe enough with their Oki. I'm trying to take advantage of that, but it's really hard. Because they're being safe enough, I guess I should say. That. Crap. That's exactly what I was worried about. How did I miss? Uh. Uh. Yeah, I don't fight a lot of Potemkin, so I really am not sure how best to deal with them. It's just... Man. Yeah, I actually don't think I've fought a human Potemkin. No, I have not fought a human Potemkin in Exert yet. Come to think of it, I don't think I've fought a human Potemkin, period. But yeah, the thing I, was, I learned a few days ago was my pin's actually more powerful than I thought. Like, I don't need to do... Like, I don't need to hit after getting a pin. Just the fact that I have the pin and can throw it and do occasionally throw it means that I apply pressure. With Potemkin, it doesn't seem like he has to respect that, though, mostly because of that Hammerfall move, because it can hit and do nothing. He just powers through it. With most other characters, especially Kai, who was playing, and actually when I learned it, because the Kai player told me, it is a different thing. Like, with the pin, it's worth thinking that the pin is something that forces my opponent to respect me. I don't have to air dash everywhere, I can just fire the pin, and then that'll cover my approach. Yes, yeah, the problem here is that I have to research, I have to search again. It doesn't just automatically give me a match, which I don't see why it doesn't. It really, should just do that. It makes life a lot easier, rather than hoping that they haven't already picked somebody else. <sighs> see what I mean? Like they've probably Warrior Panda and Strider SP are playing each other right now. I really do not agree with this particular method of doing things. Yeah. Especially since, as far as I know, no one's available. Like I said, last week, I thought that ranked wasn't working. When it really was just that the way it's set up, it doesn't just automatically give you a match. Is there a way to... No. Oh. Hmm. Well... About same. That's kind of restrictive. Oh, whatever. Let's see if I get lucky this time. Nope. Uh, what happens if I go for stronger? Oh. Hey! Maybe. Wait, wasn't this the person I was playing or trying to play just before? I feel like it was. Bafo, name sounds familiar. <sighs> Seriously, I just don't get this. I don't... I don't get the logic, and I just realized that I can use Y to search again. I'm feeling a bit silly about that, but I don't get the logic to this. It's a lot easier if you just hit quick match. I mean, the thing is, 
Exer's entire online interface is just baffling. Just the way it's set up, the amount of button presses, the amount of menu options you have to go through to get online is honestly kind of ridiculous. I don't know why it's failing after so few tries. Okay, this is getting annoying. Try one more time and then go to lobbies. <sighs> it's like, if Strider SP is there, just auto-connect me to Strider SP. Don't force me to choose. Or if there's a million players, connect me to one of them. I don't care. I just want someone who's around my rank. I don't want to pick. If I wanted to pick, I'd be playing lobbies. That's what lobbies are for. I just don't get the logic. I mean, I guess there really probably isn't a logic. It was probably an afterthought. I mean, bearing in mind, Skullgirls was made for consoles and then ported PC quite very well, actually, and then kind of made on PC for a while. It was made around the realities of North American network play. The fact that in North America, you have to play online or you're playing in small locals. But for the most part, unless you have a local scene, which thankfully I do, but it's that's Wednesday nights only, I basically have to play online. And that's true for most people. Arcades aren't a thing over here. Or if they are, they're very small. Whereas in Japan, arcades are everything. Fighting games are done in arcades. That's that's it. So for Guilty Gear, yeah, I guess it makes sense. I mean, Arxis is not really building for the console market very much. It's just pain in the butt as a result. Oops. Because all these silly things happen where it just doesn't work. Oh, wait, they're... Like I said, it just silly things happen where the UI is way more complicated than it has to be. Okay, whatever. I guess we're doing lobby. One sec. Another annoying thing, more of an Unreal Engine complaint. The Why can't Unreal Engine 3 have had borderless windowed? I mean, really. That's such an oversight. Ah. Of course, I tried a heavy metal mixer last week. This can't possibly be a good connection. Australia, New Zealand. And this is either going to be absolutely terrible or work just fine. I'm going with absolutely terrible. Yeah, everyone's zero bars. Okay, well, crap. I mean, really? Oops, no. Well, let's see how bad it really is. I mean, this person has one bar. Uh, we'll see how much delay that is. Delay is six frames. Yeah, 200 millisecond ping. Ouch. At least. Still connecting. Or I guess synchronizing, rather. Yay! 200 milliseconds ping with a bit of jitter. Ow. Ah. Talk about unreactable overheads. Man, combos are hard to do when you have no ability to act at the right timings. Ah! Oh, eight frames. Okay, that's... Yeah, 300 milliseconds. Note, the way I'm calculating that is that the frame delay is going to be half of the ping times six... Like, half of the ping divided by 16. Well, divided by 16.6. I clearly have a hard time with people who have more range, or characters that have more range than I do. Which has always been the case. Like, even before I started playing Milio and I was playing Jam. But in Accent Core, I mean, I had a hard time with characters with range. But then Jam has a really hard time with characters with range. Milia has less of an excuse thanks to the pin. 
But then again, her pin's kind of her only option in that regard. Ow. Ay. I mean, I guess 253 in a millisecond's ping is not surprising if this is supposed to be Australia New Zealand. I'm going to play this out, and then I'm going to check what other lobbies there are, because this is going to be ridiculous. Actually, I suppose I'd probably subtract one, so it's probably more like 200 milliseconds. That's still ridiculous. I mean, subtract one frame, because it's probably going to have one frame of delay just in order to make sure that everything remains synchronized. Because rollback netcode, what's that, Japan? But also, once again, arcade scene. It's just not a priority. Well, pff. okay. Wait, are they having... This doesn't feel like lag. This feels like they're having issues processing the game. Yeah, the game doesn't frame skip that much, so you actually do get slowdowns when the game slows down. It's... Fighting games have a tendency to be frame-locked. They don't necessarily have to be, but when you're dealing with lockstep netcode, yeah, they actually kind of have to be. Not necessarily it is possible, but it's kind of tricky. Because basically still involves having an internal clock for the game logic that's independent from the graphics clock, which is something you should do in the first place, and then you just frame skip. You just skip game logic frames in order to have the game itself look like it's running at 60 frames per second. Skullgirls apparently does this. But that also uses rollback netcode, so the concern is totally different. Ah, that was meant dash first. Darn it, that didn't work. I didn't have enough for Roman Cancel there. And that won't work to me any good. No, that wasn't real. That was not a real tandem to Why did I crouch? Oops. Why don't you screw that up? Ah, shoot. The roses didn't hit them. Flower and stall, don't fail me now! Hey, it didn't fail me completely. Ow. Well, flower and stall's over. Nope. Ah. Yeah, I'm... This is not working. I don't know if it's their computer or the lag. But this is not working. Whoa, you're... Yeah, I mean, it's easier to have the logic... It's probably... I don't know for sure. It's probably easier to have the logic separated out. Okay, let's start ranked again. It's probably easier to have the logic separated out when you're dealing with rollback netcode. Because rollback netcode doesn't require that everything remains entirely in sync. Oh, wait, I want to try the same rank. It doesn't require everything remains entirely in sync. So you can have... With rollback netcode, you can have it be slightly out of sync. You don't have to make sure that everyone's in complete lockstep because it's not lockstep roll. It's not lockstep netcode. But then and again, it's also kind of a matter of how it's done. I mean, if you've watched any of my zero K streams, you'll see that sometimes I join a game late and the way the spring engine works, it actually will not so much roll back, but essentially gives you a replay of what had happened for that point. And that replay gives you more or less the well it's not more or less it gives you exactly what's happened at that point and then if you ever fall out of sync it'll basically try to catch up by doing a replay of the game at fast speed now fighting games rollback netcode works kind of like that but on a much smaller and more constant scale so instead of having i mean it doesn't just catch up all the time it's like you're constantly actually a few frames behind. So what you see is later than what the game knows. The game knows for sure the state that's about three or four frames before you, depending on the rollback timing. 
but you see a later state which the game expects to be true and then it rolls back depending on whether or not things change which really doesn't happen all like it happens occasionally but not super often like the difference between whether you hit or blocked and it's within a frame it changes back uh, i guess not that, whoa, whoa are you are you playing or not Yeah, his rollback netcode doesn't quite work like the way that Spring's netcode work. And Spring's netcode would probably not work with rollbacks. And I say probably not because what you have to do for rollbacks is very much like what you have to do for first-person shooters, which is that you have to save state throughout the entirety of it so that you can basically pull back. So if something, if stuff happens that the game didn't expect, then the game can essentially go back a few frames and recalculate based on the new input. For an RTS game, especially with the spring engine, with the amount of units there are, and the sheer amount of state that would have to be passed between them and saved, and holy shit, that's a lot of delay. You'd have... That's even more than the last game. Okay, it was a matter of the computer. Anyway, with the amount of state that would have to be passed between them... Ah, crap. It just wouldn't work. Like, just from a bandwidth and memory perspective, it simply would not work. Or at least it would require a huge amount of compression. It'd be cool if it did work. But then you have other practical issues, such as, for instance, if a unit moves, let's say you have 150 milliseconds of rollback in order to offset ping. Like offset ping from here to the other side of North America. Now, when that happens, units will essentially jump to where they are, which could be up to 150 milliseconds worth of movement. So their speed times, one point, times 0.15. Now, if that speed is too high, the units will appear to teleport, which will look really disconcerting. Oops. And the problem with that is pretty obvious. If they do that, then they end up not being convincing and the game feels totally unplayable. Now, with fighting games, it's not a big deal because usually characters don't move all that much in the space of three or four frames, in the space of like, 50, 50, 60 milliseconds. But I'm fine. Dead in time does not hit that high. Anyway, in the space of 50, 50, 60 milliseconds, they don't move that much. But in an RTS game, in the space of... Well, like I said, 150 milliseconds is usually considered normal. And in that space, fighting game characters move a decent amount. But RTS game units move potentially several times their own width. So you probably have to do something where you do rollbacks, and you'd also have to ensure that... Shit. You'd also have to ensure that the, the rollback only goes as far as like the fastest units radius so the unit unit can't move further than its own radius or have its own radius away from its current position with a rollback or something like that and if that happened then it would probably work okay but at that point you're only saving like maybe 100 milliseconds and I mean, we are talking one way not round trip but honestly the ping times that spring engine games typically have for like europe to north america are on the order of 400 milliseconds so you'd be saving maybe half of that it would be nice but it wouldn't really make a huge tangible difference in practice. Like, it would make some difference. It'd be nice, but it's like for the amount of work that'd be required to actually implement that, it would probably be not worth it. It'd be cool, though. But yeah, that's like a hypothetical situation if the compression even existed. The simple user experience aspect of it would have to be accounted for. Mind you, I'd be, I would be interested to try it and see what would happen if you didn't actually account for that and just had raw rollback. If that would make it feel worse or better. I guess it wasn't too bad overall. I, okay, Akron. Six pairs of feet points out Akron. Akron's a very special case. The thing about Akron, and this is what I'm talking about, data compression. I've seen Akron's source code. It's got data compression beyond what some server software considers reasonable. Like, it is, like, it has been, I don't know, I'm sure about rightly, because I haven't seen satellite software, but it's, like, it's been compared to satellite operating system software, satellite software in general, like, as in stuff that has to be on embedded systems and, like, really cheap embedded systems in space without maintenance. I mean, it is some intense compression code, and it also is extremely limited as a result. So yeah, you can you do have essentially a rollbacky kind of setup, although, strictly speaking, Akron is lockstep. But you don't have that with a very flexible game. And considering all the systems and stuff that is simulated inside spring games, and the stuff that would have to be in a state for rollback purposes, you'd have a lot of data just to store and pass around, even with compression. 
Not to mention, Akron is really not a good user experience case as far as that's concerned. I mean, yeah, I realize I cast it for a while, but it is a hard game to under... I mean, if you watch my cast, there's a lot in my cast just on explaining what the heck's going on. Most of my casts are explaining what the heck's going on. That was actually one of the hardest parts about getting into 0k casting, is that the game actually was fairly obvious about what was happening. Actually, one of the most obvious RTS games I've seen in terms of what is happening. Darn Hammerfall. But yeah, that's the thing. Akron's not the best example of this. It's an okay example, but not the best example. Oh, wait, that's supposed to be this yep. Ball, I mean. I guess that worked. I mean, I could probably read that this, this person's gonna go Hammerfall every single chance they get. On the other hand, there's no reason for fighting him not to have rollback net code, because all the user experience things I was talking about before don't really matter, and the amount of state required is not that much compared to an RTS game. And it's also a solved problem. Like With RTS games, if you were to do rollback net code, like, that would be super experimental. I can't think of any RTS game that does that. With a fighting game, it's called GGPO. Just license that. Ow! Shoot, that was dust. Darn it. Ah. I didn't pick up my pin, did I? That's bad. Oh, boy. I haven't been paying attention to this game. If you're not, I'm actually kind of surprised at what I'm doing for having not paid attention to this game. Basically just giving a short lecture on netcode. But it's not actually a, a field I'm super experienced in. My specialization is graphics, not netcode. But then things like compression are things that you're kind of expected to know as a computer programmer, so... Ah, crap. Ah, shoot, I need to RC that. Crap. Darn it! That was the wrong one to go for. Should have gone for winger. Oh, hey. And it's a different Sin player, someone who's actually close enough I can play with. Hooray! Assuming they actually pay attention and realize that we can play. Yes, experience feed, that doesn't mean I know a fair amount about shaders. I... I love doing shader programming. Like, that is so fun. That was the most fun things in the world, is... is shader programming to me. And, yeah, there's a lot of stuff I've done with 0Ks, because it's open source, I've been playing around with a lot of stuff. You probably notice it during my cast, because I tend to just silently throw it in while I'm testing it. And... it's... I mean... Mostly I've been working on the outline effect recently. Although, admittedly, the shader code for that's been done. It's mostly been more state modification stuff, but yeah. That think artist stuff? Like, honestly, this like, excerpt is such an inspiration for that to me. Crap. What the heck? Why would that work? Down the back. But yeah, I love excerpt's art style in that regard. And yes, in case you're wondering, I have actually been experimenting with a more cur with seeing how cartoony art style shaders would work in 0K. And on surprisingly, they're actually not that noticeable. Mostly because of the way the light in most levels is cast. The effect is essentially that you just end up with a slightly brighter set of units. Ah, crap. Man, sin's annoying. I mean, it's not quite the... I don't... I haven't been experimenting with the hard edge anime look that Exert has because that requires a huge amount of vertices. Like, the actual way to do that requires basically having tons and tons and tons of vertices. And most models in 0k do not have that many vertices. I and mean, we're talking like 40,000 vertices. Whereas 
what I've been experimenting with is more just using a square root function on the diffuse lighting, and that that creates a similar look without having quite as sharp lines. It actually is a bit more of a Western animation look. Because most Western animation doesn't quite have the hardness of lines. Not quite as much as anime. It's still relatively hard, but it's not as hard. I could have ever thrown that. I could have thrown that. I gotta remember to throw more often. And in this case, block more often, for goodness sake. How the heck did I screw that up in a two frame delay? This is like the best connection I've ever had. And as for direct APIs like Vulcan, I actually haven't had much of a chance to play around with those or to check, check them out too much. I'm kind of waiting until I hear more about specifics about the shader language. I mean, it would. There are certain things I find annoying about having to work, especially with zero K with old OpenGL, because at, at work I'm working with newer OpenGL stuff. Not super new, because we're still. Like, I'm not working with games or anything, so it's not like we're dealing with super up to date computers for the customers. But it's. It's still kind of nice to have the. Ah, it's still nice to have... Okay, I'm gonna take this match. Oh, come on! That was mine! Shit, you're annoying. Man, that input's annoying! I'm... I can't believe I lost that! I don't get why that pin input's so hard! Oh, wait. Shh. Come on. Anyway, yeah, with Vulcan, the intermediate representation thing, I actually don't really like. I mean, mostly because I've actually learned a lot by basically looking at like API trace outputs of OpenGL code. Not to mention, I don't really see the point because a lot of stuff that is done, like state-of-the-art graphic stuff, I mean, nowadays is a bit more recent. But for the longest time, it's been like 20-year-old academic papers. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. And even now, it's still like 5-year-old-ish, five 5-10-year-old five, academic papers. Like, academic graphic stuff is years ahead of what even gaming considers state-of-the-art. So I really don't see the point of being so hung up and concerned about how people are going to see shader code. Because there's a lot more to it than just shader code. It's like, the way that you represent state and so forth and how you play around with that is a lot of that as well. Ah, crap. Uh, I do not know how to fight the Temkin. At all. Oh, crap. I was dizzy. Ay. <sighs> And honestly, I have no idea about the shade representation thing. I was actually under the impression that it was going to essentially switch to some sort of new ARB assembly type thing. But if it is still GLSL, that'd be great. Because GLSL is a nice language. Uh, I hate fighting Potemkin. I hate fighting grapplers, period. I suck at dealing with throws in any fighting game. I cannot, I cannot understand how to deal with grapplers. It's like, I just want to be in your face punching you. And you're going and throwing me. How do I deal with that? And in case you're wondering, Guild Gear Exeter does not have throw... Well, Sign doesn't have throw breaks. Revelator will. Ah, 
Ah, shoot. Uh. Oh, it put me far enough away, I don't have to worry about it. I didn't expect that. But, of course, Potemkin Buster. The only thing that keeps Potemkin from being garbage here. Apparently, at least. Oh, okay. Six Crispy mentioned something about it being something you can use other than GLSL. Well, I guess if you can use HLSL, that would help adoption. Because I know a lot of people like to use the Direct X Shader language instead. Ugh. Darn it. Not a fan of Potemkin. Oh, great. Now I have no, no opponent. I guess I could wait here for whoever's going to win. Well, the Sin player is a really good connection, and not sure if it's Slayer player. No idea what they're like. Doesn't look good, but I also don't know how they play. <sighs> now, it's kind of funny. I thought initially that it was going to be a better system to have this since the games can start independent of each other. But it's such a pain in the butt. I mean, at this point, okay, five players, fine. But it's still kind of a pain in the butt. Essentially, it's sub-lobbies. Which... Nah. It seems like it just is a less efficient way of getting games going. Mind you, my goal is to play as much as possible. How long has it been? Oh, 40. Actually, no, it's been 40 minutes. This has been pretty good. See if I can find another game. But if I can't, then I'll probably just... Stop. I mean, it's been a pretty good amount of time. Okay, let's see. Is, I guess Wounded Pancakes isn't watching them. Or are they waiting? Also, the connections don't look promising. Actually, I don't know, the Kai player looks promising, but they're not playing me! Ugh. Did they not note? I guess they must have turned off the notifications. Crap. One of the early problems with Exert was that the notifications you see from time to time where it says that someone's joined the room. It used to show the entire log every single time someone joined, and I think most people shut off notifications because of that. Which means people can't see when someone pops in, even if they're looking for a game. I can't go to Heavy Metal Mixer's room, it doesn't work. I don't like waiting. And there are six players here. None of whom I suspect have their notifications on. How oh, annoying. Oh, never mind. It's only 7.30. I guess it won't stop quite yet. I forgot that little timer thing also counts the 15 minutes of countdown. <sighs> so my apologies to those who have just joined me, because I am just waiting in the lobby. I may try ranked again. In fact, I will try ranked again, because I don't think anyone's going to bother. If someone bothered, they would have bothered right then. Alright, so let's see. And also, apparently, the intermediate format for Vulcan works with any shader language. That's cool. Or at least the main shader languages. 
No mention of Mantle there in that list. Oh, wait, I was playing this Ungatok player earlier. Are they still... Oh, come on. All right, I don't have to go back. I can hit Y. I was playing them earlier. Oh, Vulcan. Oh, I see. Mantle's apparently now Vulcan. That's interesting to know. I did not realize that. Oh, come on, you silly game. Are they just not connecting to me because I'm rank 3 or what? Wow. Well, this is annoying. That's no better. This is apparently the only room that's there. That's just perfect. I'm probably going to be stuck against the Temkin player again. Also, just perfect. Or maybe the Sin player. The Bedemkin player is actually pretty strong. Yep, it's the Sin player. Go, Sin player! Awesome! That's fast. That's what I want. Now we have an efficient distribution of games. And I've got a really good connection to this player, so I'm happy. Ah! Oops. Wow, that's a giant hitbox. Shoot, I thought I could beat them out. Oh wait, I can ball that. That was a mistake. Ah, what I had I had a perfect setup there. Darn it. Seriously, that was a perfect setup. The crouching slash? It's crouching slash crouching heavy slash. Totally worked. Ah. Man, I'm still getting used to this stupid thing. Whoa, I hit? That was not expected. That was definitely a thing that should not have happened. <sighs> I really wish my pin would come out. Like, I'm hitting down to back. Yeah, Amelia has to pick up the pin. Whenever she throws the pin, she has to pick it up again before she can use it again. But that's the only resource. Like, there's no bar or anything supporting it. It's just, if she has the pin, she throws the pin. If she doesn't have to pin the pin, she has to pick up the pin. Oh wait, I can combo off that, can't I? <sighs> Crap. I need someone to teach me the sin matchup. I cannot figure it out quickly enough. Oh, the connection's forcing. And yeah, if you're wondering, Silent Force the Pin is one of Milia's like, 
core elements. It's a huge thing. Have, ah, crap. Being able to use Bin properly is a huge part of playing Milia well. Darn it. Ah, shoot. Well, I missed one of the hits, but still. Crap. What? Ah, I thought it was high enough. Oops. I'm ready. Oh. Okay. Ah, I got too close. Shoot. What? Again with the pin input not working. Why is it so picky? It's like this entire game is designed to just to ruin players with Octagates. All oh, right, I don't have my pin. Crap! Why did I press buttons? Mine, that's a problem that's uniquely mine for... It's a problem I have for every fighting game, but it's a problem I find uniquely I have for Guilty Gear. <sighs> Again with the pin failing! I don't think I have this match at all. I might be okay. I... Oh, nice. Works. I haven't even gotten my B and B out yet, actually, and I think about it in this match. <sighs> Man, I'm just... I don't know what I'm doing right now. Like, sheesh, I'm going to be able to play while offhand discussing internal aspects of netcode and graphics code, and now I can't play at all while focusing. Maybe I should just try to give a lecture on computer science topics every single time I play, even in a tournament, in order to be able to concentrate, because apparently that's what I need to do to concentrate, is to just distract myself enough that I don't fall in my habits, which makes no sense, because if I'm distracted, I should, you know, not, I should be falling into my habits when I'm distracted. Ah, if only I knew the follow us to that one. Oh, why did I burst? That was not the time to burst. Immediately after was the time to burst. Ah, great. Man, this is embarrassing. So what am I even doing? Oops, I gotta follow up with the dust after the first roll, not the second roll. What the heck? I hit low! Ah, I keep doing that. I don't know why, but I keep using the buffer is just gonna preserve whatever the last move I hit, and not the first move I hit. Despite the fact that literally no fighting in buffers work that way. Crap. But yeah, I keep expecting, like, if I jam a bunch of moves, whatever the last one I use is the one that the game is gonna go with. Whoa. Ah. <sighs> I don't know why I expect that. I guess I expect that because, I mean, the thing about RTS games, when you're clicking around, if you're right-clicking units a bunch of times, the last order, unless you're holding shift, is the one that's going to be used. Admittedly, that's not buffered, but still, like, the idea of issue a bunch of commands and the last one is the one that's actually used by the game, 
That makes sense where I'd get that from. Although I guess if that was the case in fighting games, that'd just be an option select that, like, this universal option select, and that would probably... Well, okay, some people would really like that, because some people just think option select are good in principle. In general, I hear bad, more bad than good about option selects. All right, pin, pin, pin. Uh, why'd I do that? I have my pin. Ah, crap. Then enough time. Ah! And they don't have the burst! Crap. I almost got that right. My guess is that in high level play, Sin's really vulnerable to being in, to being just defended. So that's probably why it feels so hard for me, because I don't know how to do just defend, and honestly, just defend online is a pain in the butt anyway. And that's one of the hardest parts about input lag, is that Guilty Gear's defense is based around just defend in a great deal, and you can't really do that on... I mean, in this particular connection, I can, in theory, but... Ah, crap, that was a waste. But yeah, in general, it's like not an option. Ah. Crap. Okay, one more. Win or lose, and then I'll probably call it. What? Oh, come on! One more of me playing, I should say. Oh, hey. Someone else is bored. <laughs> Milia versus Milia. Which will inevitably be commentated by Milia on Milia's stage with Milia's music. Oh no, it's not Milia's music, it's the same character music. My mistake. Actually, this is... This all versus Kai music, isn't it? Oh, if only the bloody input would work. Okay, that's... Well, at least I showed them, I guess. I'm actually kind of surprised they're using Iron Savior and Bad Moon in neutral. That's not a common thing. No, that's the the hair car and the spinning attack from the air. Ah, crap. That was my exact setup. Are you trying to give me tension or something? I don't understand. I, that must have been a miss input.
Okay, well... While this is going to be the last match I do on stream, I don't think it's going to be the last match I do tonight. Because I'm actually enjoying this particular player. See, that's where it makes sense to use... Actually, Bad Moon's mostly a mix-up tool, or it was, back in Axon Core. Now it's not so much. Okay. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be the stream for me tonight. So thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone.